Welcome to Metacomic Golf Club in East Providence, Rhode Island. This is a hickoryhacker.com golf course profile where I'll be showing you every shot from the front nine played with hickory shafted golf clubs. Metacomet was a 1925 Donald Ross signature design. Uh, I say was because unfortunately this course closed about a week after I had a chance to play it. You can read more about that in the article I wrote for hickoryhacker.com. Picking up the action, I was trying to get off the first tee in a hurry because I had a couple people behind me uh, who were letting me play through by myself, which I appreciated because uh, I was using the camera for the first time. Uh, I really wanted to take advantage of the opportunity I had to play this course, uh, my one and only opportunity. Um, so it was nice to be by myself, but the first hole suffered here because I didn't take any time at all, really. I was just trying to get through to get ahead of the group so they wouldn't be waiting on me. So while the golf here might be hard to watch, I hope the scenery makes up for it. I apologize for the bad camera angle here. Um, like I said, this is my first time filming myself playing, so I was still trying to figure out where to place the camera. Uh, you can't see the ball here, but you can see it scoot across the green really fast. In an effort to tee off as quick as possible so I could get ahead of everyone, I didn't hit any putts on the practice green, and that was a mistake. These were lightning fast, and definitely the quickest greens I've ever played, uh, and they were also in perfect condition. One of the things that really struck me uh, and impressed me throughout this round was just how well the course was taken care of all the way up to the very end. I mean, there's only a week left, and I know they were expecting a, a lot of people to come out for one last round there, and they wanted it to look nice. But to me, it's just a, uh, it's a testament to the respect that the superintendent and the staff had for the course uh, to keep it in prime condition all the way up to the very last shot, the very last putt. And speaking of putts, I'm still trying to get off the first green here. I think this is probably where I figured out um, score was not going to be something that I was going to be proud of today, but um, it really didn't matter. I was here to ex experience the golf course and enjoy it, and uh, I did. That takes us to number two, where um, I've, I've got some room between myself and the group behind me, and I'm starting to feel more relaxed. And it definitely showed on this drive. I was playing the whites to start, um, but then figured out that on par fours, I could play the blues. Uh, the distance was a little bit better for me. Um, this hole was really cool. Uh, I ended up driving it through the fairway, so I could probably play the blues on this hole as well. Um, but then you've got this uh, little inlet to get over uh, where the dog leg is. And here I hit a really nice Tom Stewart 24 degree 2 iron. So yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, at this point, uh, not as frantic as I was on the first hole, and I'm taking in the scenery and uh, just starting to kind of settle in. So after that rough start on one, now I'm looking at a birdie opportunity on number two. But I just didn't start that high enough. And that left me with about a foot and a half for par. This was a short putt, but I took my time lining it up because I, I wasn't going to take anything for granted after what happened on the first hole. Fortunately, I read that right, and I'm walking off two with a par. 
Number three was a drivable par four for most people with modern clubs, but not quite with the hickory clubs for me. So after my drive on number two, I was feeling pretty confident with myself off the tee and felt like I could use the driver again uh, to put this in the middle of the fairway. I ended up pulling it just a little bit um, enough so that it went left into some really thick lush rough. Uh, this hole's primary defense is the elevated green with the narrow shoot between some bunkers so I wasn't doing myself any favors here trying to approach that from the rough and uh, it just caught my mashie, kept the face wide open. I ended up pushing that one wide right, setting up this short pitch, which fortunately went all right. For this little chip, I'm using my 44 degree Gibson Niblick. This is pretty much the only time I use this club, uh, you know, these kinds of shots around the green. Uh, I was pretty happy with that effort, even though it scooted past the hole. Um, I'm finding that my short game is actually improved with hickory clubs um, versus my modern clubs. Uh, I'm not sure why that is exactly, but I feel um, more confident with a lot of these around the green shots. Uh, that I was having a hard time with when I'd have three different wedges to choose from. So this is a drive I wish I could have taken back. Um, in fact, I think it may have been easier had I gone to the blues than from the whites here. Uh, it, it The whole dog legs um, around the tree that you see on the left side there. So it's a blind tee shot from here. And I was just trying to power it because I, you know, when I can't visualize where the shot's going to go, I often overswing uh, on those shots. And uh, that's what I did there. And uh, it put me in the rough, not even in the fairway yet. Gave me a, a nice scenic angle into the hole, <laughs> but not where I wanted to be. I was able to save it a little bit there. That was my Gibson Deep Face Mashie, uh, 36 degree club. And um, from this spot, I'm using a 46 degree Stewart Mashie Niblick. Uh, probably wasn't enough club considering the length of the rough here. I found myself in the bunker, and um, when I played this round, I was still having a really difficult time figuring out what approach to use to get out of sand. Um, I've since figured out something that's been more consistent, but uh, had not figured it out during this round, so ended up having to take a few shots to get out of here. As you can see, I still haven't figured out the greens yet. Generally, I really like fast greens that run true, and that was definitely the case at Metacomet. I have a Brant Snedeker style stroke with my hickory putter that uh, generally works pretty well for me on fast greens. But yeah, these greens were quicker than anything I've, I've played on before. Number five was a cool par three, elevated green up there. Um, 
perfect distance for my Gibson Deep Face Mashi uh, 30 degree club. And really what I'm trying to do here is just hit a draw into the green. And uh, it pretty much did exactly what I was trying to do. Uh, I could have started it out a little bit further right, um, but I left myself a legitimate birdie attempt here. And I was pretty happy with that effort. That left me with probably, I would say, two feet, two and a half feet for par. just far enough out to make me think twice about it and I ended up putting it a little too far right and it lipped out. But I was able to clean that up for the bogey. So number six was a par four. It goes uphill about halfway to the hole. Uh, gives you a blind tee shot here and uh, the hope is you just get it up to the top of the crest so that you're not looking at a blind second shot. Uh, this is where I started playing the, the blue tees even though it was a little further back um, I felt like my length off the tee in this particular day was good enough to be able to scoot back a little bit more and uh, you know, I'll say it probably visually helped me too not to be so close to that hill uh, gave me a little bit more perspective into the fairway, and I ended up hitting a nice drive there. So that left me on um, just a little bit of an upslope here. Uh, I'm using my 21 degree Jack White uh, spoon made by Louisville Golf. And uh, I think the incline was just enough there to, to cause me to dig that club, but uh, I hit ball first. Um, not really what you're trying to do with the spoon, um, but it worked and put me in position for this short pitch um, using my 36 degree McGregor mashie here. This is one of my favorite shots to hit with hickory clubs. Um, the approach, I just put this on the green too deep considering the speed and um, normally I would have wanted to hit this in the front of the before the green so that it could roll up especially considering the assistance I was going to get from the speed. But I ended up in the back of the green and um, just trying to putt it close there. Not too bad. Still leaves me with a, a lengthy putt um, to get in for bogey. And I'm not sure what line I was looking at there, but that didn't break at all to the left uh, like I thought it was going to. So, double bogey, heading into uh, the last three holes. This was a beautiful hole. Uh, not shown in this video is the first tee shot, which went left into the trees. So I teed up another one, and uh, this is my 36 degree mashy, and I uh, put this right where I wanted it on the green. And not a bad putt there. Left me with a short bogey putt here. And again, taking my time because I'm learning quickly not to take any of these uh, short putts for granted. So, unfortunate that I hit that first shot into the trees, otherwise that would have been a nice par. So number eight's another short par four, but this one 
had a feature that I did not uh, expect. I, I didn't look ahead on the scorecard to see what lay ahead. And um, I figured I saw a bunker on the left side there. I knew a dog leg left. So my, my goal here was just to try to hit this drive over the left side of the bunker to try to cut that corner a little bit. So I pretty much hit my drive where I was aiming uh, but had no idea that the better play here would have been to go straight into the fairway far right of that bunker uh, to leave myself an angle into the green, which is on the other side of the ravine um, that you can see here. And there I was just trying to play it safe, get it back into play, and um, the rough was way thicker than I expected it to be. Again, another th shot trying to hit it out of thick rough. At this point, I'm just deciding I'm going to go over the ravine um, even though I have no angle on the hole. And, you know, considering the lie, I, I had a pretty good shot there with my 36 degree mashy. Um, but I ended up going out of bounds, found the ball, was able to pull it back into play, but I obviously had to take the strokes there. So now, you know, the hole's just falling apart on me from a scorecard perspective. Uh, all that said, though, a lot of respect for this golf hole. This is probably the most interesting hole on the course for me. Um, and uh, would have loved to get another crack at it. And another lip out here. I'm starting to zero in on the hole a little bit better by this point, though. So that brings us to number nine, pretty straightforward, par five. Uh, all I need to do here is get it straight into the fairway. There's plenty of room out there, um, but often in my head, uh, that gives me a green light to overswing. And, um, and that's pretty much what happened here. Way too aggressive in my downswing, ended up topping the ball Fortunately, I stayed in the fairway and set up my best shot of the day um, with the 21 degree Jack White spoon. And that sound right there is one of the main reasons I play with hickory clubs. Uh, I love that sound. Also worth noting is that I had a bit of an audience on that shot and uh, it's always nice when you hit a good shot with the hickory clubs with uh, people watching. So here I'm off on the, on the left rough a little bit, using the 36 degree mashy. Got pretty good contact there, but I ended up pushing it right and um, down a pretty steep grade, uh, which set up this awkward chip back into play. Um, I'm pretty close to the green here, but you know I'm going to have to stop it pretty quick if I want to hold it. And uh, instead ended up skipping it across the green and down an even worse <laughs> incline on the left side, which set up this very pretty panoramic shot of the uh, front nine, um, but left me with a really difficult uphill chip uh, back onto the green. And uh, game plan here is to try to use my mashy niblick to drive this ball into the top of the hill and hope it dribbles up. Uh, for the most part, that's what I was able to do but I ended up getting better contact than I expected. And um, the ball was able to skip up and stop pretty close to the hole. I even heard somebody on uh, number five green remark a good shot. I didn't know where it was until just there. Um, so not a bad way to, to close out the front nine. Definitely made some rookie mistakes, this being my first time playing here, but um, also had some good shots uh, to take away from the round. And I'll just echo what a lot of people that I've talked to about Metacommon have said. 
um, which is that they're really going to miss playing here. Uh, I can see why, and I wish that I would have had more opportunities to play here, but glad I had this one. So that wraps up this course profile of Meta Comet Golf Club in East Providence, Rhode Island. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.